Diabolical Tales. For your increased enjoyment, this special episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour will be presented without commercials. However, because our programming is reliant on our sponsors, tonight's episode will feature product placement by Triple X Vodka. Dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. Many of the incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the authentic records from the above top secret U.S. government Project Agartha which is concerned with the deadly and imminent threat of a secret civilization from within the Earth. Now, based on the motion picture by Cosmic Control Productions and featuring the original orchestral score by Troy Sterling Neese, we are proud to present this adaptation of Diabolical Tales, Part 1, Genesis of the Men from Within the Earth. part of our adaptation of Diabolical Tales, Genesis of the Men from Within the Earth. A deadly and mysterious man in a black cape murdered FBI agent Cooper's partner with a strange, advanced weapon and put in motion an evil plot to steal U.S. government atomic technology. Now, Agent Cooper has joined Operative 132 Secretive Investigation which has brought them to the Atomic Energy Commission building in Washington, D.C. This is where we plant our hydrogen and atomic bombs. Wow. Well, don't drool too much. We've got a Russian spy to nab, remember? Right. Operative 132 noticed a young lady walking by. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm with the National Security Agency. This is Cooper, FBI. We'd like to ask you some questions. Yes, sir? Have you had any files go missing lately? Actually, yeah. The hydrogen bomb plans. This happened a couple of nights ago, right? We're pretty wound up about it. Well, tell me. If I had plans to make an H-bomb, what exactly would I need? Hmm. Well, plutonium, uranium, and a triggering device. But you can get all those at the AEC plant. That's where we made the hydrogen bomb. It's across town. Well, thank you very much for your help. I guess you'd better start, uh, drawing up some new H-bomb plans. I guess so. Well, Cooper, I guess we'd better head out to that AEC plant tonight. I think our Russian saboteur might try to grab some chemicals. Right, O-132. We haven't a moment to lose. Several hours later, Agent Cooper and Operative 132 were sitting in 0132's parked car near the AEC plant. Here, I got you some Joe. Thanks, but I told you, I don't drink the stuff. Take it. If you want to be an honest-to-God G-man, you gotta drink coffee. It's a given. Besides, it's nights like this you're gonna need it. Darn it. That reminds me, I forgot to go to the liquor store. Scotch? No, I need to pick up vodka for Kate. Only pinko commie Russians drink vodka. Not triple X vodka. It's made from only the finest American ingredients. 100% capitalist American vodka. Yeah, I think I've read about triple X vodka. They donate 2% of all profits to pro-democracy movements fighting existing communist regimes worldwide. Right, Cooper? That's right, O-132. And triple X vodka is pretty easy to find on those lower shelves. Kate sure does enjoy triple X vodka. So, uh, what did you do before you joined the NSA? Well, between you and me, I worked on a lot of military projects. Project Sign, Project Grudge. 
The UFO projects? Yeah, I worked a lot of those. I've been all over the country. Fargo, North Dakota, New Mexico, Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, even those sightings at the Washington National Airport back in July. Okay. Yeah. So you've got to level with me. What's the deal with that Roswell thing? <laughs> a weather balloon. A weather balloon? That's it? Or, uh, you know, swamp gas. Don't worry about it. But I thought New Mexico was just a desert. How could it be swamp gas? Uh, temperature inversions. But there was a meteor shower about that time, too. Uh, don't worry about it. There was... We never found any alien bodies, we never found a flying saucer with hieroglyphics, and they didn't come from the fourth planet of the binary star Zeta Reticuli. Whole thing was a big hoax. Yeah, these, uh, men from within the Earth, they've been a big rumor for a long time. Men from within the Earth? I thought you said they were communists. Oh, the pink Okami Russians. Been a legend, really. How so? O-132 sits up. Alert. What? What is it? It was the man in the black cape. Song. He was carrying a case under his arm. Our G-Man heroes climb out of their car in pursuit, openly brandishing their standard-issue sidearms. Freeze, Freeze man in black. black! I know who you are, and I know what you're doing here. Zong stopped and swept around, his hand extended to them. I will destroy you with the powers of my mind, surface dwellers. What does he think he's doing? As previously mentioned, our antagonist Zong falsely believes that he possesses evil mind powers. So he strained with everything he had. But it wasn't working. Uh, whatever it is, it's not working. Put down the case of elements, Z! I told you to pray that we did not meet again. Yet here you are, surface dweller. Wait, what? You killed a lot of my men! Now put down the case of elements, man in black! And now you will die, surface dwellers. Let's get them! The G-Man charged at Song, who turned and ran. Uh -huh. Song then jumped over a small chain fence, which proved to be an obstacle for the G-Man. So Agent Cooper raised his gun and... But 0132 slapped Agent Cooper's gun down. No! Never shoot to kill! We've never captured a single one of those underworld freaks. We need him alive at all costs! Uh, I'm... I'm... I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Underworld freaks? Never mind. I'm sure he got a hold of the elements. Was that the same one you saw the night Agent Thompson was killed? I think so. At least he was dressed the same. What was that he said about meeting you again? And what you said about him killing a lot of your men? Above top secret. <sighs> Look, we'll come back tomorrow with a Geiger counter. We'll wander around aimlessly until we pick up a signal. If my hunch is correct, he's hiding out below. Subway? Close. O-132 turned and walked off into the night. With much confusion, Agent Cooper slowly followed. The next morning, our heroes were drinking coffee in Agent Cooper's office at FBI headquarters. Operative 132 was on an important phone call. Yes, sir, General Burton. Uh, well, all I know is that Agent Cooper here identified him as the same man he saw the other night. Agent who? Cooper, sir. Agent Cooper, FBI. Does he have the necessary security clearance? Well, no. He's not cleared for that yet. No, sir, not yet. as long as they use the appropriate covers. General, we need a Geiger counter out here so we can go find him. I'm sure it's out there. I'll see what I can do, but we need those stolen materials back. I'll be having another briefing with the Joint's Chiefs this afternoon. The President is already about to have another ulcer over this. He's convinced he's going to lose an American city to this. Well, we'll see, sir. You can tell the President that I won't allow that to happen. It's a measure of national defense. All right. Good luck, Operative 132. Thank you, General Burton. 
Things are getting crazy. Truman has alerted President-elect Eisenhower about the stolen plans and elements. And now Ike is pushing to declare a state of national emergency. We gotta work fast. <clears throat> 0132 and Agent Cooper looked up to see FBI Assistant Director Smith. Who, may I ask, are you, sir? My name is not important, Assistant Director Smith. I work for the National Security Agency. I thought I told you that you had the rest of the week off. Well, I'm not working on the Giancana case, sir. And I thought I told you, under orders, that you were to ignore the case regarding Agent Thompson. We already have top men working on it. That would be me, Assistant Director. The NSA took over the case the hour after it happened. I have jurisdiction here and I've brought Cooper in on it with me. You can tell, J. Edgar, that Agent Cooper will be working with me for a while. Assistant Director Smith glared at our protagonists and slowly turned away. Thanks. We've got batter fish to fry than him right now. There's a Geiger counter for us at the docks. We have a sinister man who may have an H-bomb in the making, and if he uses it, DC may be completely annihilated. Let's go. As our G-Men heroes made their way to the door, Agent Cooper took one last sip of his coffee mm. and realized how much he loved it. Mm. Mm. A short time later, they found themselves near a rocky gorge in a remote forest. All right, with this Geiger counter, we should be able to locate the missing uranium and plutonium. Once we get that, our man in black shouldn't be too far away. So who is this General Burton? Uh, he's with the Pentagon. He was my boss before I joined the NSA. We keep in touch. He's good about giving me info when I need it. He's involved in all of this above top secret stuff? Yeah, something like that, Agent Cooper. Agent Cooper and 0132 didn't realize how close they actually were. Dozens of feet below the rock beneath them, Zong works away in his evil underground lair. And now, you surface dwellers, I will unleash your own crude atomic weapon on you. When the ashes of your leaders settle, nation will rise against nation, and you will destroy each other. My hydrogen bomb is ready. Perimeter alert. Ah, so, these two again. Well, no bother. I will destroy them with my mind, and then I will move on to Washington, D.C. The evil Zong picked up his briefcase H-bomb. He noticed his weapon on the console. He raised his hand. Concentrate. It was another evil mind power attempt. Come to me, my faithful weapon. Come to me. As usual, it didn't work. So Zong picked up his weapon and made his way out. He's got to be here somewhere. I know it. He must be underground. Come on, O-132. Level with me. What's this underground you keep talking about? Oh. Oh, I never said it. Meanwhile, the evil Zong made his way out of a hidden cave entrance. Within seconds, he noticed Agent Cooper and Operative 132. From his vantage point, he raised his hand and started yet another mind power attack. Concentrate. Concentrate. You will feel my powers crushing you. Agent Cooper put a hand to his temple. I, I think I'm getting a headache. It must be from all that Geiger counter's noise. 
Cooper, look! They spotted the man in black. Oh. Zong picked up his briefcase H-bomb, turned and ran in the opposite direction. The G-men gave chase. As Zong attempted to climb the side of a rock wall, Agent Cooper tackled him from behind, knocking the briefcase away. It tumbled to the ground where 0132 grabbed it. Zong then swung his head back, headbutting Agent Cooper and knocking him back. Zong turned toward Operative 132, opened the briefcase, and then raised his gun. Don't move! I mean it this time! I'll shoot you in the arm! You fool! You started the bomb! Deactivate it! Never! I will perish with it, as will you! Oh, 132 nodded to Agent Cooper, put down his gun and started fiddling with the bomb. His gun raised, Agent Cooper shuffled closer to Zong. You're the one who killed Agent Thompson. Yes, I killed him with my handy pocket electro incinerator. What kind of communist device is that? Communist? What are you talking about, surface dweller? Surface dweller? Where are you from, you strange sinister foe? I am from the underworld, and now we are going to destroy you all using your own hydrogen bomb. We will have our revenge! Revenge? What has the United States of America ever done to the underworld? You don't even know, do you? <laughs> you fools! A few weeks ago, your United States of America blew up a hydrogen bomb in the middle of the ocean. That explosion ripped through underground caverns, flooding miles of our tunnels, killing over a hundred thousand of our people! When this happened, we realized you had gotten much too powerful. We were so happy to let you live up on the surface and have your stupid little lives. Well, that's all over now. We're gonna detonate this bomb near Washington, D.C. Your little friends will think, oh, the Russians did it, the Russians did it, and a nuclear war will ensue, destroying all of the surface world. You will all be gone. Not if I have anything to say about it, man in black. Agent Cooper glanced away as Operative 132 frantically started pulling at cables on the bomb. Then Zong struck. He kicked Agent Cooper and pulled out his handy pocket electro incinerator. Agent Cooper quickly picked himself up as 0132 dodged the deadly blast. Agent Cooper tackled Zong. With the two struggling for control of Zong's weapon, Agent Cooper headbutts Zong and catches him as he falls away. Zong picks himself back up and leaps at Agent Cooper. Agent Cooper used Zong's own weapon and vaporized him into dust. Give me the handy pocket electro incinerator. What? The, the, the doohickey. Agent Cooper tossed the electro incinerator to Operative 132, who in a last ditch effort aimed it at the briefcase H-bomb and fired. <laughs> <sighs> wow, that was a close one. A few seconds more, we'd be standing in a crater 175 feet deep and... one mile wide. It would have blown up Washington, we're so close to the city. Who was that? I told you not to kill him. We've never captured any one of them before. Now we get the chance and you incinerate him. But who was he? He wasn't a communist. He didn't even seem to know what a communist was. And what was his story about the underworld and flooding their chambers and killing thousands of their people? What's going on? 0132 picked up his gun and started walking away. Agent Cooper followed behind him. Why won't you tell me? I'm already involved in it. If you tell me what's going on, I can help you. I just need to know what it's about. 0132 finally stopped. He turned around to face Agent Cooper. What I'm about to tell you is above top secret. But I'll tell you, Agent Cooper, because I'm tired of keeping it bottled up in my own head. I think his name was Zong, or definitely started with a Z. He comes from the underworld, and I mean under the world. His people have lived down there for thousands, maybe millions of years, right beneath our feet. In 1939, the Nazis believed in the legends of these people, that they were superior beings who would help them take over the world. 
They even uncovered evidence in Tibet that these beings did exist. The legends called their underworld kingdom Agartha. And from what he said, it would seem that these beings, these men from within the earth, have declared war on the United States of America and all human beings on the surface of the world. This news shook Agent Cooper to his core. Do we have a way to get into their underworld? We've sent a few men down there, but everybody we send down there comes back in a body bag. Can we strike back? I don't know, but I do know one thing. For now, the threat is over. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Well, one thing's for sure. You've got my help, 0132. It's my civic duty. Now let's get a cup of Joe. You know, Agent Cooper, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Our G-Men heroes turn to gaze out over the ravine in triumph. But they could sense an uncertain future. Master Sergeant, report. Zong has failed. He was killed by two surface dwellers working for the government of the United States. They destroyed the hydrogen bomb and stopped Plan Zero. And I have information about them. Proceed. This special episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Brian Bedell, Jack Ferguson, Kyle Stroud, Brianna McDowell, Troy Sterling Neese, Brandon Kane, and Don Guerin as Master Zun. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese, the mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios, and the original sound design was by Jim Reeder of Sweet Audio Sound Design. Based on the motion picture by Cosmic Control Productions, it was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. I'm Brian Bedell, and I play FBI Agent Cooper on Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. While our show is a lot of fun to create, each episode costs a lot of time and money to produce. So if you liked what you heard, please subscribe to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour on your preferred medium in order to catch new episodes as they're released. And if you have the means, please consider donating to our show at patreon.com slash diabolicaltales. Patrons will help us continue to produce the show, and will also give you access to bonus materials and additional content. You can also find us at diabolicaltales.com. And thank you for listening to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour.